Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Steve Jamroz. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Dan, and tonight I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Fracka Tillmans, and we welcome you to the fourth installment of our 2021 webinar series, where we've been coming together each month to discuss a new dive safety topic to keep you safer and better prepared. If you're watching our webinars tonight for the first time, tonight's presentation will last approximately 30 to 45 minutes, and we'll follow that up with a question and answer session at the end. Also, this webinar will be, will be recorded, so if you either come in late or you need to leave early, you'll be able to catch the whole presentation in its entirety over on our YouTube uh, channel. Also, keep in mind that if you're viewing this presentation from the event page at dan.org, you won't be able to ask questions from that page. So click the button for YouTube and hop on over to our YouTube channel where you'll be able to put the questions in the chat and we'll address those at the end of the presentation. Tonight's presentation is entitled Return to Diving Safely and it's your guide to getting you back into the water. And tonight we're gonna to explore a number of different things that kind of go into that and Dr. Uh, Tillmans will lead us through that, but we're gonna address your period of inactivity and with COVID, there's a lot of folks that have been out of the water for quite some time. I'm going to take a look at that. We're going to talk about your health status and your fitness levels. And both of those items may have changed uh, over your period of being inactive and out of the water. We're going to evaluate your diving equipment. We're going to look at refreshing your diving skills. And then we're going to evaluate your travel plans before you kind of leave for your next uh, dive trip and vacation. So our, our presenter tonight is Dr. Fraka Tillmans. She's the research director here at Dan. She has a degree in human biology and a PhD in oxidative stress. Uh, Dr. Tillmans is an experienced public safety diver, a scientific diver, and a dive safety officer. So she really knows what she's talking about and she's here to help you tonight. So if you have questions, please put those in the chat box and we'll address those at the end of the evening. But before we begin tonight, um, on behalf of the entire Dan team, I'd just like to thank all of you for joining us. It's through your membership and support of our programs, professional programs, support of our dive accident insurance, travel insurance programs, that events like this are possible. So thank you for your participation. And with that, I give it to Dr. Tillmans. Take it away. Thank you, Steve, for that very kind introduction. Um, today's webinar, as Steve already said, is return to diving safely. And the, pur the purpose of this presentation is to get you back in the water as safe as you possibly can. We do know that some of you have never stopped diving over the last year. Lucky you. Not everyone was that lucky. And um, if you have been out of the water for a while, whatever led to that, um, we're here to help and we're here to get you back as safe as we can. All the information I'm talking about today is also to be found on the Dan website. And um, you will, if, if you go to dan.org slash return, you will find all of this and more um, to help you get back into diving safe. We're going to go through this in a step-by-step -step approach. So there's six different things that we want you to consider. Um, one is your inactivity, so how long has it been, your health status, your fitness level, which indeed might have changed over the pandemic or in general, um, what you need to take care of when looking at your equipment that has been lying around for a while, uh, your diving skills and the travel plans you might have. So we're going to start with inactivity. Um, the question is, how long have you been out of the water? And no matter what the reason for your absence was, if it was personal obligations or, or um, commitments that you had, if it was illness or injury, if you actually had COVID or if something else kept you out, um, each of those are, are individual reasons that you have to consider. Um, that also means in general, everything you're going to do is basically the same, um, but with your individual focus on whatever kept you out. With that, um, we have put together a, uh, a map, so to say, this table for you, 
and it shows you if you have been out of the water for up to 12 months, um, what you need to consider for health, for fitness, for skills and equipment. And I'm not going to go over each of these points right now in detail. You will find this on the website as well. Um, but what I do want you to know is that this information is there and that there is differences if you've been out of the water for less than a year, one to three years, three to ten years, or even more. So having um, started a family and a successful business and now you, you feel you want to go back into the water, um, you need to consider the same things as someone who has just been out of the water for six months. So I've got a question for you. So before we go on to, to the next slide, there, there's, a, there's a large amount of information on here. Some of it's very specific, uh, one of which uh, calls out the RSTC medical form. Where would a diver go to find that, that form? Is that available easily? It absolutely is. Um, and that brings us to the next part, the health status. Um, there is information out there, plenty information on um, your health and how to, how to evaluate that. The, this medical evaluation form is something that you can find on the UHMS website. So go to uhms.org and you do find the link for that on our website as well on dan.org slash return. Um, and it is basically a self-assessment of you, how you feel and if you think you or which assesses if you can go back into the water right now. Um, with that being said, we also came up with a guideline for a lifelong medical fitness to dive. And this we're actually going to cover in more detail. Um, if you're a candidate for an entry level course and, uh, and or continuing education, um, you want to have a medical fitness to dive evaluation before you participate. You can obviously also just take this diver medical participant questionnaire, which we just talked about. Um, but we, we do encourage you to actually take a fit to dive exam to have your, um, your physician, a, a licensed diving physician, um, look at you and tell you if you're fit to dive or not. If you're healthy, um, you want to take this diver medical participant questionnaire every year. If you are asymptomatic, you consider yourself healthy, but you do have two or more risk factors of the following. So for example, smoking or you vape, um, you have high blood pressure, you have high cholesterol, you're obese, you have a family history of heart attack or, um, or a sudden cardiac death. Um, or you can safely say that you are never exercising. Um, any two of those or more, will mean that you want to take a dive uh, medical evaluation, so an actual fitness to dive exam, um, at least every five years. This also uh, goes into effect if you're 45 years and older. I'm sorry for that. Um, by the time you reach age 65 or you have pre-existing diseases, like, uh, that which cover heart, lungs, blood metabolism, you name it, um, you want to take this fit to dive exam every year because things do change and we do not get younger. The medical evaluation form or this fit to dive evaluation form, please know we are here to help. If you cannot find a diving physician in your area, call us, call our medical helpline. We will tell you where to find one. We will refer you to a diving physician. What we also do is um, consult with your physician, your primary physician on diving physiology and diving medicine. So if he or she has a question, refer, him, refer them to us and we are happy to guide there. And then if you have acute illness, and this should be, I don't want to insult anyone's intelligence, but if you have an acute illness, don't go dive. And if you have to, uh, if it is, bad enough, see a physician. Acute illness also covers the common cold. So if you really don't feel well, you do not need to go in the water. You will all only make it worse. Wait until you're recovered. Wait until you reach your pre-illness exercise capacity again. That is important. Um, and then return to diving. I got a question for you. And you just mentioned acute illnesses there a couple times. And I'm sure the question on 
uh, the audience in mind with, with COVID, are, are there any specific recommendations or uh, things that's, that a diver who's had COVID um, needs to address before they get back into the water or do they follow the same protocol? Um, th that very much depends on how bad your infection was. If you remained asymptomatic and you really only found out that you had COVID through an antibody test, um, then you might get away with, with uh, just the diver medical participation uh, participant questionnaire. Um, if you did have any type of symptoms, we encourage you to see a physician and get a fit to dive exam. Very good. We already talked about it, the Diver Medical Participant Questionnaire. There's various forms of this, uh, of this form circulating the web. Um, the one you want to, f to see or you want to, um, to download is the one from the uhms.org website, which we point to on our own website. Um, it has been put together by a number of agencies. It is a consensus form. Um, there are other um, other diver medical forms uh, that various agencies have put out. There is nothing wrong with it. It's just this is the one we participated in, and we really believe this is the one you want to take. Um, the list I just showed you, or the table, um, we also have in this flow chart here. So again, something that you can see and download on the website. Um, if you're an entry-level diver, diver medical participant questionnaire. Um, if there is any positive answers on there, and that includes, are you over 45 or did you have COVID, then you do want to have a medical evaluation. And I already see the red flags coming up everywhere and the questions. Um, yes, a dive operator can refuse to take you diving if you, if you have not seen a physician have not got a clearance to dive, but you, you tick the box, I had COVID. That unfortunately happens, and it is to, put, to, to keep you safe. So just keep, keep that in mind. <clears throat> the next um, part, and this is a big one, and not only in, in pre, mid, and post COVID times, is fitness to dive. So wherever you want to go to dive, it is important that you are fit for the task. And that means are you, you need to, to make yourself familiar with the diving con conditions and you need to know, are you prepared for the current that might be there? Are you prepared for an emergency? Are you prepared and fit enough to climb a ladder with full equipment or to tow your buddy to shore? Um, the way to, to to find out whether you are fit to dive or if you have the right aerobic exercise capacity, there's various ways to do that. So you can either um, go to an actual laboratory um, or physiology lab and get a VO2 max task, a test, so which will measure your maximum oxygen uptake under um, um, when you when you exercise, um, another way which is less complicated and uh, kind of it's probably the one you want to go with is to uh, establish what type of METs you can do. So MET is metabolic equivalent, um, and one MET is basically the same as your resting. So there's no intensity level. You burn something like 50, 70, 80 kilocalories per hour just sitting on the couch. That is one met. At that time, when you start working out, so if you go for a light, for, for a walk, or if you take out your bike for a nice, nice bike ride, nothing, nothing fancy, you might reach up to 10 to 12 mets. Um, there is an intermediate or moderate intensity level, um, which is around 15, 16, 17 mets. Um, and you're burning a lot more calories there. Diving is considered moderate exercise. So you do want to reach that type of, of activity um, and intensity level. 
Now, the trick with diving is that you might actually get to the advanced, so the vigorous intensity level, if things go wrong. And we do know from experience, and that is why Dan is still in business, that things do go wrong. So if you are not prepared to, to um, conduct vigorous exercise for at least a short amount of time, um, you might want to consider getting back into shape. Um, how do you do that? Easy ways to do this is to uh, measure your submaximal exercise capacity. So you calculate 85% of your maximum heart rate. Your maximum heart rate is 220 minus your age. Um, so of that, 85%. Once you reach that, and everyone now has fitness trackers and can actually see what your heart rate is, get a polar belt, get a Fitbit, get a, an Apple Watch, um, or any other type of, of fitness tracking device, and that will tell you what your heart rate at that point in time is. Now, between those different fitness classifications um, or the different mats that I just talked about. There is obviously sedentary, you, you're just sitting on the couch. There is light exercise, moderate exercise and vigorous. And all those are connected to your, to a percentage of your maximum heart rate. And that is something you can actually do at home. Um, action item for you, if you want to get back into shape, schedule two and a half hours, moderate intensity, aerobic exercise per week and take do more if you feel like it and if you can um, and add two days of muscle strength exercise whether that is um, deep muscle pilates or if that is actual weight training um, completely up to you but do put some muscle and strength exercise in it so you can actually lift that equipment which isn't light do you have any recommendations on the exercises? Is there any information or data we have versus cardio versus strength or a blend? Is one better than the other? Or would you recommend someone just tries to have a balanced exercise program to get back out there? Uh, I'll, go with the, nice? I'll go with a balance. You want to do both. You want the strength to actually be able to carry those tanks before and after the dive, especially after the dive. Um, you do want this, this aerobic part. It will um, come with all kinds of benefits. It will reduce stress level. It will um, help you keep your heart rate down in a stressful situation. So there's really, you, you cannot lose. Yeah, go, go one step further here. So we, we talked about the exercise. What, what about st stretching? Does, does that factor into the, the program at all? Or is that important for a diver to consider um, you know, as far as helping, you know, swimming or after they've been out of the water? Sure. So um, what you want to do is obviously being in the water, um, swimming is a life-saving skill for any diver, well, for everyone, but for, for diving especially. So um, if you are not used, and that is, I think, the most important, if you're not used to a certain movement that you have to do, so fin kicking, if that is something you don't do every day, then that is something that might cause cramp or things, things like that. So that is something you want to do. You want to stretch your legs. You do want to swim more than you, than you would run if you have the, now that the pools are back and, mm -hmm. and opening again, that would definitely be something that I would put into this aerobic exercise plan. Very good. Um, what you want to consider is that you have your personal limits and that is important that you respect those. Um, if you have been sitting on the couch during the pandemic because no one let you out, then you do want to start your exercise program relatively slow. Um, you want to increase that intensity gradually. If you don't make the two and a half hours in the first two weeks, don't worry about it. Um, but 30 minutes of walking in the lunch break is, um, is a good way to start. You want to consult a physician um, if you're getting into exercise for the first time in a very, very, very long time, um, or you want to consult a fitness coach and it doesn't hurt to also consult a nutritionist um, because a healthy mind lives in a healthy body. You do want 
to have the full package. You want the full wellness, fitness, health package for you. So get all the help you can possibly can. The next part we're going to talk about is your equipment. And while you've been sitting on the couch, your equipment has been sitting in a closet somewhere. And um, if you did a good job cleaning it before you put it in that closet, that's probably not so bad. If you didn't, um, take a closer look at it just to see uh, what, what happened to it. Inspect the gear. And the gear we're talking about is your BCD. And that includes weight pockets. Um, you would be amazed what happened to weight what happens to weight pockets if you don't take care of them. Um, regulators, obviously, uh, your dive computer, mask and snorkel, um, all everything you have your th for thermal protection, um, gloves, your hood, your boots, wetsuit or dry suit, a bit more complicated, and your cylinders. All that deserves um, an inspection. And the level of that inspection is going to be different for each of those devices. Uh, so what I want you to do is um, to, to look at each of these devices and see, is it clean? That is number one. Then the second one would be, do I see any signs of wear and tear? So is there, are there holes in it? Is there, um, is anything ripped? Does anything look funny? Um, if it is, take it to the shop. If it is really bad, take it to the trash and renew. So just get new equipment. Um, the next thing you want to do after you've, you've made sure that it looks okay and that, it, that, that it, it seems to be in order is if everything is functioning. And that includes do uh, inflator buttons work? Is anything stuck? Does the regulator actually breathe? Um, are the hoses in good shape? Do I, um, does anything come off when, when I pull on it or push on it? Or, so you just generally want that the function you're looking for underwater is already working on the surface. Absolutely. Can we dig into that one just sure. a, a little bit more? Because that's an interesting one. And I think that, that almost every diver sitting there at home, we can assess our, our fins, uh, you know, if they're cracked or they're torn or we have holes in our, our wetsuit. I mean, that stuff is obvious. But, you know, what would be a good recommendation to a diver? You know, where do you draw the line? Like when you get into uh, assessing and fixing uh, regulators, um, you know, those are very, those are life-saving devices. I mean, there's so much information out there now you can just about learn anything from, from YouTube and find, find a video on it. So, you know, should someone try to do that at home and, and save some money or what would you advise? So, Is there any uh, guideline for that? So the, the, the strong advice here, don't do that at home. Um, it is important that for everything that is life-saving equipment, which is basically everything that will get you breathing and safe to the surface, um, that needs, re needs regular maintenance from someone who knows what they're doing. So you want to take it to the shop, you want a um, certified professional a, a technician to look at it and to take it apart and put it back together and replace the parts that are needed. A YouTube video, and that is for all of you out there, I, I know you're there, a YouTube video does not make you a technician. Just, just putting. Yeah, it it's out great there. advice. Just <laughs> because you you can repair and replace that that item doesn't mean that you should. You should take that to a, right. a trained professional who's experienced at right. doing that. Um, for that, please follow your manufacturer's advice. So each of your regulators, all computers, all BCs come with a manual, and that will tell you how often this regulator or that device wants to go into maintenance and service. Um, you want to make sure that batteries are charged or replaced. Again, some computers are more complicated than others. Um, some require that uh, they, they be sent in for a battery change. Um, please do that. Don't, don't tamper with it um, on your own because some of them need to get pressure tested after the battery is in and everything is put neatly back together. Um, and then the next thing I really, really, really encourage you to do, look at every piece of equipment and see if you know everything about it. You do want to be familiar with everything you own or everything you rent from a shop. 
Um, if you rent equipment, have your dive guide, the, the um, assistant in the shop, whoever gave it to you, have them run you through all the functions of that equipment. Um, know in the BC where are the dump valves, where is the, where is the power inflator, what does it do. Um, this is important and you want to dry run all of that before actually going in open water. That's good advice. So very important, of course, you can do your visual inspections. That's kind of what, what Steve just, just asked. Um, some of it, or all, a lot of your equipment needs servicing. So please take that seriously. Uh, your manufacturer or the manufacturer of that gear will tell you when that is needed. But then at some point, that equipment gets old and there's companies out there that produce so much of it, they even sell it. So don't be afraid to renew your dive gear um, when it is time. You do not need to patchwork anything. This is life-saving equipment. You do want to come back safe. And that is what we're here for, um, to make sure that your return to diving is as safe as it possibly can. Which brings us to the next thing, and that is probably my favorite, uh, diving skills. So use it or lose it is basically what, what this is getting at. And what you want is you want to refresh all your skills if you have been out of the water for a while. Um, that can start with just a check dive. So you've been out of the water for six months um, and you decide, okay, I want to go diving again. Hey, Steve, you want to go diving with me? Let's do a check dive. Let's just go in. Let's go into the pool or let's go in a quarry uh, somewhere close and just see that everything is working. Don't go deep. Just see that everything works and that we can we can get skills back up. Um, if it has been a lot longer than six months or a year, you might want to consider taking a refresher training. So actually find an instructor and have that instructor run you through that check dive and have them um, evaluate a few skills with you again. Or if it has been a really, really long time, remember that diving com you have changed, um, but so has the diving community and the diving industry. So there is no harm in retaking an entry level course or um, or just retake your open water certification if it has been five years since you've been in the water. Um, and that includes the classroom and the in-water portion. Both of those have merits to do. What you want to practice, for example, on that check dive, um, or on that day when you do a check dive and you go out with your new buddy, is you want to do pre-dive checks whatever you've learned, whatever, whatever you have, um, you have memorized how to check with your body if your equipment works and their equipment works and you're, you're fine and know that everything is working, do that. Um, you want to do buoyancy checks, which includes, do I have enough weight? Do I have too much weight? Um, all that. Take your time with that. You want to practice the basics, mask clearing, mask removal and, um, and replacement, recovering and clearing your regulator, um, switching to an alternate regulator or an alternate air source. Um, it is always good to do, although you do have your own alternate regulator, if you, are at a, if, if you uh, run out of air, catastrophic air, air loss, then you need to be able to share air with your buddy. Um, that is always a good drill, which also helps you mitigate stress when it actually happens, when you know what you have to do. And then depending on what your agency taught, um, controlled emergency swimming ascent or just emergency swimming ascent, that is something that you might want to refresh as well. The first dive after long inactivity, um, our advice, Take it easy. Don't overdo it. Um, always dive with a buddy. Don't dive alone. Doesn't matter if you're certified for it. If, if it has been a long time, just make sure you have someone who can, who can help you if you're running into any trouble. Um, emphasize free pre-dive safety checks. 
So run through all the all the good practices your instructor has taught you. Um, stay shallow for the first one. There's just as much to see in shallow water as there is in deep water. Avoid unknown and remote dive sites. So nothing is more um, more annoying than getting to a remote dive site and then figuring out, ah, no, I, I forgot half of it because I, or I can't get, get, get deeper than five, than, than two feet because I, I didn't take my weights or it just stay local if you can. I know that's not possible. We live in Durham. We know what we're talking about. Um, and another thing, avoid currents or hazards. So nothing that is strenuous, nothing that requires you climbing 30 feet up a, up a cliff to get out of the water again. Just pick an easy site and uh, get comfortable with your gear, with yourself and with your body again. So Dr. Thomas, let me just jump in here for a second. So you just mentioned we're, we're, we're in Durham. We're broadcasting here tonight from Durham, North Carolina. And, you know, to, to someone who's maybe uh, in, in Texas, we have a lot, a lot of divers from Texas, big dive population there, uh, and they don't have access to, to open water, and, and maybe their dive shop is their only choice and they've got access to a pool. I mean, does that still give them value to, to go to the pool and refresh their, their skills, even if it may not be, be open water or even a quarry, something like that? Absolutely. Um, I encourage everyone to to test out, especially new equipment or anything that you haven't used in a while. Try it out in a pool. Um, there's just as much value in taking all your open water gear or just your recreational gear or all your tech equipment into a pool. It will just it, it will be just as much value for you to to try skills and and uh, handling your equipment um, there as it would be in open water. It is even better because it is controlled, it is confined. It takes a little pressure off. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good way to get started slowly. And then we have, obviously, we have um, the prepared diver course. So if you visit dan.diverelearning.com, um, you can take, you can sign up for our prepared diver course, which will also run you through a lot of um, of the information that I've shared today. But um, that will emphasize pre-dive checks. That will run you again through what you need to think about when looking at skills and your equipment. And it is a very helpful course. And as you see, I've taken it myself. Um, not recently. I should probably retake that in a minute. Um, which brings us to the last part I would want to talk about today, and that is your travel plans. So we're all happy that, um, at least on our side of the world, things are opening back up, um, mask mandates are lifted, flights are going out more frequently. Um, now that we can do that, keep in mind that that is not everywhere in the world. So what you want to do, whether you travel domestic or international, for every um, travel destination, you want to look at the local health and safety requirements. So what do I need to enter the country? Um, are there travel re restrictions for that area at the moment? Are there quarantines in place? Is the infection rate stable? So do they, did they have a big issue with COVID? Do they still have it? Is the infection rate going up or down or, or staying stable? Um, do they require any vaccinations or tests that I need to bring? Um, do I have to be tested for malaria? Do I need to bring medication for malaria? And um, especially important when, you move, when you're going to remote locations is emergency medical care. Where is the closest hospital? Um, what is evacuation going to look like? Um, what what emergency medical facilities are in the area and how far away would they be? And if they are not close or if they are so far away that it might be an issue for you, prepare for the worst and bring whatever medication you need or you might need and a first aid kit with you so you're prepared um, in case things go wrong. Um, another thing to consider 
when we're looking at travel is the local dive operators. Um, every country works a bit different. Every dive operator works a bit different. Make sure that you know what precautions and, and what your, your dive operator takes and does to make you and to, to make you safe and to, to focus on your health and safety. Um, that begins with, do they actually ask for a medical statement? Um, do they have safety protocols in place? Do they have an emergency action plan? Don't be afraid to call them up and say, look, do, do you have a, an emergency action plan? Is your staff actually um, trained to, to do that? Do they know what to do when? Do they have the equipment? Do they know how to handle all the equipment? Does everyone know how to turn on an oxygen tank and put a mask on my face? Um, what is also important, and that is, this, this is often underestimated, is what type of diving am I going to do and is my fitness level okay for that? We've talked about fitness a bit, but um, is all the diving shore diving? Is all the diving in strong currents? Do I need to fight against the current or am I just swimming with it? Um, anything that uh, is it especially cold or is it just can, can I basically dive in a swimsuit? All that goes into preparation and um, what you need what you need to know what certification is required for the type of diving i'm doing there that is important and um, do they offer refresher courses so if i didn't get to do my refresher course back at home can i still get my refresher course at that that quarry or can or do they offer check dives or do they require check dives that is all important information that you want um, to collect before you even travel. Um, a last part is you do want to think about your personal safety, which entails dive accident insurance and ideally travel insurance. And with this, I'm going to turn over uh, to Steve, who's going to tell you all about that. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Tillman. And I think it's important to, to touch on this as kind of as we start to wind down the presentation. But, you know, we, we have a lot of uh, information to share with divers about safety. And we also have products. So these are some of the, the, the products that can give you protection when, when you're traveling out there. And, and obviously, you're going to have to help me advance the this, this slides here. But uh, most of you are familiar with our dive accident insurance programs. And we also have our travel insurance programs. Uh, we've been working on these, uh, both of these programs uh, very hard behind the scenes and kind of the downtime we've had with COVID. We've, we've kind of completely re revamped the dive accident coverage as well as the travel insurance. So if you haven't taken a look at those, if you're not sure when your expiration dates are, please make sure that your coverage is up to date before you leave on any dive travel, especially if you're going outside of the country. You definitely don't want to to, uh, to leave without it. So I'm just going to touch on a, a couple of the features of the, the dive accident insurance. Um, but the dive accident insurance is really important because it covers diving and non-diving uh, accidents and injuries, including named water sports. And having that accident insurance is really important, especially if you're going out of the country, because uh, it pays 100% of eligible expenses and it basically picks up where your uh, primary coverage may, uh, may not cover um, the expenses. They're worldwide coverage um, and it, coverage starts at just $40 a year and it varies slightly depending upon your state. So it's very inexpensive. It's a really smart way to protect yourself, especially with, with um, you know, travel coming up. Go ahead. Um, a couple of the high level uh, benefits of the dive accident insurance is obviously the, the big one is the medical expense coverage. It covers anything from hyperbaric chamber treatments, which are generally excluded from primary um, insurance coverage, uh, physician and hospital charges. It covers ground transportation. Um, you know, God forbid there's an air evacuation that's required from a remote location. That, that can get really expensive quickly. And uh, the Dan Dive Accident Insurance covers all those types of things. So uh, there's a lot of things on this slide. Uh, the, the best way to, to, to take a look at this is to go on to dan.org and you can get a, a, an instant quote. You basically pick uh, your country, whether it's the United States or Canada, is what we service here out of our uh, US office. We also have international offices. If you're watching uh, outside of the country tonight or outside of Canada, if you're one of our Dan uh, World Partners, you can log on to those appropriate websites and get yourself a, uh, a dive accident insurance quote. 
But like I mentioned before, when you go to the next one, the coverage is very inexpensive. It's kind of that essential gear that you want to take with you on your next dive travel. So make sure that's up to date and you, uh, you're ready to go. Uh, similarly is, is our travel insurance program. You can click ahead, uh, Fralka. So the travel insurance, as I as just stated, it's been completely updated and revamped. We've got some great plans and programs. We offer two different types of coverage. You can either get a per trip plan and then you can also get an annual plan. So no matter how many trips you have coming up for the year, you can cover all of those with just one policy. It's really simple and pretty economical. So whether you're going for dive travel or even business travel, you can cover every everything that you're doing uh, throughout the year. So uh, let's take a quick look at why someone would want to purchase um, dive, um, I'm sorry, the travel insurance. Obviously, you know, as travelers and divers, we were, we're on the road, we've experienced a lot of these uh, with the travel delays and weather, and we've been stuck in airports. That's what the travel insurance is really designed to help you protect against. Um, the big one, obviously, as we all sit here tonight, is, is obviously COVID-19, and we're gonna touch on that in just a second, but the Dan Travel Insurance Programs offer coverage for uh, COVID-19, so it's, it's very reassuring, and it'll be a great idea to have that protection in place before you go on your next trip. Let me go ahead to the next one. So I just touched briefly on uh, some of this. So we ha have the two different programs, the trip and the annual, and it covers the, the different areas of metal pro medical protection, baggage, um, and other assistance services. And, and they're a little bit different. You know, we get the question quite often, you know, do I need dive accident insurance and travel insurance? And the answer is yes, they're, they're both beneficial because they offer different levels of coverage and protect against different types of things. So make sure you go on dan.org, check out the coverage, Find the one that's most appropriate for you and make sure you've got those up to date before you leave on your next trip. Let's touch, Fraka, just for a second on the travel insurance and, and COVID-19, because obviously this is top of everybody's mind with the pandemic and everything. But um, we get asked, our member services team here all the time, you know, does Dan Travel Insurance protect against COVID-19? And yes, it does. It, it offers uh, some protections against that. Uh, both prior to your departure and during your trip. So there's a lot of detailed information uh, that I probably won't do it justice here tonight. So my recommendation will be when you get a free moment, go on dan.org slash travel. It's all outlined there for you. If you have questions, you can always call our member services team. We're absolutely here, here to help you. And then if you go to the next one, um, another way Dan uh, is here to help you when it comes to travel insurance specifically is we've been obviously watching closely what's going on with, with travel and travel opening up and the, the different guidelines that are, are being given, uh, you know, they're country specific even. And what we're doing, uh, you know, if you need an embassy letter to prove to the country your destination where you might be doing dive travel, that you have travel insurance in place, we can provide those to you. Um, we also offer, offer plans that offer cancel for any reason. Um, protection. So if something comes up and you do need to cancel that trip, uh, you're able to recover up to 75% of the trip cost. So it makes a lot of sense and um, there's very low risk there. Also, the, the big thing, and we spent a lot of time uh, last year helping uh, travelers, you know, travel is a little uncertain right now. So, um, you know, we encourage people to get the travel protection, book their dates, and if they do need to change for some reason, we're here to help them do that. So instead of canceling your trip, canceling the policy, we're here to, to help you make sure that coverage is in place so you're protected with both dive accident insurance and the travel insurance. Go to the next one. And again, it's very, very similar to the dive accident. We've made it very simple to get an instant quote. Uh, this one is an example for trip insurance. You basically give us the departure date and return, uh, where you're from and the approximate trip value, and we can give you an instant quote and get you on your way. <clears throat> and then just wrapping up on the, on the travel insurance, um, and Frauke alluded to this and mentioned it to her, to her in, your, in her slides. Um, you know, know before you go. I think things are changing so rapidly with the different requirements and restrictions. Uh, some restrictions are being eased, uh, mask requirements, uh, mandated travel insurance in some cases before you, before you even enter a country. So make sure you know what the requirements are at the, at the destination that you're going. will make things a lot easier uh, on your trip. And then lastly, just wrapping up, and for those of you uh, watching tonight, if, if you go to the next slide, um, you know, obviously make sure before you go that your DAN membership is up to date and you've renewed that. 
you know, for just $35 a year for an individual, $55 for a family, you get some great benefits. Uh, the big one is up to $150,000 in emergency medical evacuation coverage, and that's valid anytime you travel 50 or more miles from home. So make sure uh, you know, you've got all your information. Those uh, memberships are, are updated. And keep in mind, you've, you've got to get that membership to maintain your dive accident insurance, but it's not required for travel insurance. So it's a little bit different there. But we're always here to help. If you have questions about those, uh, you can talk to our member services team uh, anytime. So I'm going to kick it back over to, to Frauke and she can maybe just give us a, a, a recap here of what we talked about tonight. Right. Well, thank you, Steve. That was very helpful information. Um, please all consider, if you are not already a DAN member, become one. Um, look at those, those insurance um, products. We, we are doing the best we can to keep you safe. Um, now, what you should have learned today, or what, what you might have taken away from today, is that it is a step-by-step -step process, and it is really your responsibility um, to make sure that you are best prepared. So if you have had a longer time of an inactivity in your diving, make sure that you're up to date on your, your health status, that you, you might need to take an exam, you might not. Um, we give you all the information you want. We're here to help. Our medical information line is um, available during business hours, um, and they will answer all types of questions about your fit to dive exam and or fitness requirements. Um, make sure your equipment is up to date. Make sure you take the time to practice your skills and get back into it and um, make sure that you have everything laid out for your travel. Um, know before you go so you do not have any issues once you're in a country that you don't yet know. So if you can check all of those um, six boxes, then you're good to go. I hope this was um, informative for you. If you have any questions that we haven't answered already, then please leave us uh, a message in the chat and we're going to have a quick Q&A after this. And with that, um, follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram and or YouTube if you're not already on there right now. And we want to thank all our members again all the pros and businesses that support us and that that help us to keep the lights on here at Dan and that helped us keep the light on lights on um, during the the hard part of the pandemic and the quarantine. Um, without your support, I couldn't do research. The medical services couldn't answer your calls, and our first aid programs would not be available to you. So thank you for that. And with that, um, we are. Happy to take your questions. Yeah, and we've actually got a few here. They, they came in the chat uh, during the course of the presentation. So we'll, we'll go through these. A couple of these I've already uh, addressed in the chat window, but we'll, we'll talk about, uh, again just for everybody's benefit. So uh, Ron asked, will this uh, presentation be available to rewatch re later? Um, and the answer absolutely. to that is absolutely yes. So this presentation is being recorded tonight. Uh, we'll get this posted uh, either later this evening or tomorrow. Uh, and that yeah, can be watched on our uh, Facebook page at Dan TV, so you can check it out. Um, along those same lines, a lad sent a question and asked, will these charts, so that was early in the presentation, will the charts that uh, Dr. Tillman was discussing be available to print? Um, we have the charts available on dan.org. We have a, basically a microsite that we've set up with all this information at dan.org backslash return. That will get you to the landing page and uh, you can take a look at the charts and you can uh, you could probably copy and paste and print those uh, from there uh, why asked we'll be able to find this information on the website i just mentioned that yes it, it's dan.org backslash return and that will get you to all the different modules that dr tillman's uh, talked about tonight i've got another question that came in from why this is a, a specific detailed question it says, if renting diving equipment, are there any new health and safety regulations that the diving companies are required to follow? 
So it sounds like because of COVID, maybe he's thinking the, the regulations have changed. Yeah, so, like maybe say, um, so there is there have never been global or national requirements, or it it has never been made official who has to take which precautions. But most dive operators have done a terrific job in disinfecting and cleaning and changing out equipment between customers. So um, that is something that you would want to also inquire from the dive operator or the dive shop. You actually take the equipment from what what measures they are taking. There's okay. yeah. Right, I've got a couple more more questions here. This one is from from Tibbs. Uh, it says, does Dan offer any refresher courses, and it looks like pertaining to CPR or AEDs local to Durham? And that might be a question that be better directed to our, our training department. I, I'm not uh, exactly familiar what the course lineup and schedule is sitting here tonight, but if you call back uh, during normal business hours and get forwarded to our, our training department, I'm sure that we can address that one for you. And then the next question here, this is from David, and I covered this a little bit in the travel insurance segment there at the end. Uh, David's question is, does, does travel insurance have to be dive related? Uh, that's part one of the question. The answer to that is, is no. And that's the great thing about Dan travel insurance is that uh, you, you can book our, our, our programs for either dive uh, travel recreational travel you could even do it for for business travel so there's all types of people who are, are trusting our insurance and there's there's different levels of programs uh, geared exactly what you're looking for uh, the second part of David's question is it says uh, does the travel have to be uh, domestic or international it looks like is the question the answer is it's worldwide coverage and, and anywhere you go uh, as long as you you um, you purchase it through us that would that would qualify for for coverage so if you have any more detailed questions david uh, again uh, call back talk to our member services team there are normal business hours there's a ton of available information on the website a lot a lot of, a lot of q and a's there that get into some pretty uh, specific details i've um, got another question that just came in from elaine uh, Elaine says she had her equipment checked prior to her dive trip. The trip was rescheduled to December. Should she have the equipment serviced again before she goes? So the question would be how long has it been since that, that first scheduled dive trip? Um, consult your manufacturers. Uh, the recommendations to see um, if it has been longer than a year, then it's it's it, there's a good chance that the regulator wants to be serviced again. Well, then if it hasn't been in the water at all, so you have not been been there, it's talk to your local dive shop, um, see what they say, and um, look into into the manual and and see what the manufacturer wants for your equipment. It's really we all know we want to, to save some money here and there, but, but in the equipment service, that's not the, the place to start with saving money. Yeah, I think that, that's good advice. So uh, that last question, that's the last one I, I see in the chat. We'll give it just a, another, another second here. If anybody's got any last minute questions, but we'll let that come in. Again, if your question does not get answered uh, here this evening, always uh, you can call us, um, you, you can email us, and we're, we're happy to respond uh, to your questions, and we'll take as much time as, as needed to, uh, to make sure that you get what you need. So uh, it doesn't look like any other questions are coming in through, through the chat window. So uh, with that, I'd like to conclude our presentation for this evening. Uh, we hope you'll join us again next month. Uh, next month presentation is June 24th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll, pre we'll be presenting COVID-19 and diving and that will be hosted by doctors Chimiak, Nishetto, and Survivor. So we've got three, uh, three doctors uh, on board for next month, and it should be uh, really enlightening and informative. So thanks again. Thanks to everyone for being with us tonight, and a special thanks to all of our DAN members. Uh, it's with your support that you make all this, this possible uh, for what we do. So thank you very much. That's all for us tonight here from Durham. Good evening and safe diving, everyone.